Hello and welcome to the companion video to my podcast, Steam on the Cheap. This is for episode number 12, where I'm going to review The Escapist. Steam on the Cheap is a podcast you can find on iTunes or your favorite podcatcher, where I review cheap Steam games, usually the week they come out, to let you know if they're actually worth your time and money. As we know, these new games don't really have many reviews, especially when they're little indie games that no one knows about, and so it's always a gamble. I'm going to take that gamble away. So The Escapist is a neat little kind of side scroll. well, it's a platformer that's side-scrolling up, scrolling stationary, all these different ways. I'm going to go through the first world with you guys and let you kind of look at the gameplay and let it help judge whether or not you want to buy the game. Just for the record, this first world is going to look a lot easier because I have played a bit and come down to the shop right here where you can get upgrades. And yes, that sound for the upgrade menu is super annoying. So the upgrades that we can get is a speed boost, a little extra burst, some wall grip, and jump, which I have at level 4, almost level 5, and level 5 is the max upgrades for all these. So all those upgrades will make sense as we go through the levels, so let's begin with level 1. Here's our cartoon skit. All I know of the story is that I'm a thief that stole something, and another thief stole it from me, and I'm trying to steal it back. Pretty simple. So, basic gameplay, you can jump, and this is a level 4 jump, so you can imagine how small your starting jump is. You're moving right, moving left, jumping pretty far, and you can jump short. You know, it's all how long you hold the directional pad while you jump dictates that. You can wall crime. You can jump off the wall and kind of hover by holding R1. And then the gimmick of the game is you hold down R1 and you use your right joystick and you can kind of pick which way you're going and Sonic Spin. Yep, yep, there it is. Now you can also hover and Sonic Spin somewhere. Oops, and I went through the portal. So, level <laughs> 1 complete. Now the gold coins are what you're trying to get to purchase your upgrades, that's your loot. Uh, basically the gameplay is the game starts you somewhere on the level and you need to get to the wormhole on the other side. Why? I don't know, because there's no story and it doesn't tell you any of that stuff. So I am not going to try to get all these coins because this is just a quick gameplay video. I'm going to try to run through and let you know how it goes, and, and you kind of see the difficulty as it ramps up, which it does. Another side note is I'm going to die an awful lot. This game is made to die several, several times until you get through a level, or until you perfect the controls and the level. So far, everything's pretty basic, until we get to some exploding boxes, which I just easily bounce over because once again we're at the beginning. Now I haven't touched one yet but just so you know you hit the boxes boom you're dead. Look at that. You have infinite lives in this game and you are going to need them because there are levels where I've died in excess of 50 times before beating it. So let's avoid these chainsaws because they're probably really bad and going to kill me. Let's avoid these boxes down here and go through the next wormhole. Bouncing off walls helps. Oops. Because see, like that, if you don't bounce, you die. The other alternative to bouncing off walls is you can just kind of wall climb them up and go over. Sometimes it's easier. And uh, I think most of the time I prefer just to wall climb up real quick instead of doing all the crazy bouncing stuff. Mm. See, that's bad. Alright, so let's get through this level. Another thing to note is that when you are holding down this R1 button and you're aiming, don't let go of the joystick because if you let go of both, you don't go very far like that and you're going to kill yourself. If you want to go a short ways, then that is a way to do it, but most of the time you want a full good spin to get where you want to go. So, no more messing around, let's get through this. Uh, 
Um, see, sometimes the controls on this are a little gimmicky and a little hard sometimes to get used to them. And there are, I don't know if it's a bug or not, but sometimes you keep running even though you stopped pushing on the joystick and that is also going to kill you a couple times. And I haven't been able to predict when it will or will not happen, which leads me to believe that it's not an actual gameplay design, but just kind of something that the game does on accident. Here's a fun jumpy level. And I'm going to die right now on purpose to show you that if you're on one of these things and you go off the screen, you are dead. There are no checkpoints in an individual level. If you die, you are going to have to start over at the beginning. And that can be a little frustrating. Because there are some parts that are pretty hard and sometimes you feel like you only got past it because of luck. And you feel like you have to get lucky again if you die. Oh, see, you hit that stupid down arrow. This game is hard for two reasons. One, they designed it to be a tough game. But, the janky controls also give it a difficulty level that I don't know if they intended. But as far as I know, it's something that they ended up with and didn't want to fix or didn't have time to fix. Or maybe it was supposed to be all janky controls to make it even harder. Alright, so now the difficulty is going to start ramping up. I'm going to stand still for a second so you can see that this level is actually scrolling and it's forcing me to move fast. These ice blocks, as you can see, break away once you touch them. And there are also these alternative routes that you could take to get to the end that give you more coins and cash and gold. Uh, I'm going to skip all that right now because we're just doing a video. And I'm not trying to max out my winnings. Oh, that was horrible. And that was one of those things where I just couldn't control myself. I hit a button and I started flying around like a crazy person and just kind of had to do what it made me do. I'm assuming by the arc of the coins that it wants you to do some kind of crazy madness, but I'm not that good. I played this game for about three hours so far and it's taken about that long to kind of really master the controls to where I feel super confident. I wanted to wait for that before I did this gameplay video because if not it would have just been me dying constantly and no one wants to see that I've already died enough and I feel semi-confident alright so here's some cool things try to get that bounce perfect and it's a little easy with the arrows It'd be scary if they ever took those arrows away. Would not make for a good day. Oops. As you can see, uh, these levels get pretty tough, and especially with the controls, it takes, uh, takes several times. I've beaten this one a couple times, but still I can't do it on the first try. I'm just going to skip all that craziness and just kind of wall climb to the top to get out of here. 113, we're already almost to the end. There's 18 levels in this first world. And if you subscribe to my channel and watched several of my videos, you know that I'll usually talk quite a bit more than this in my games, but this one requires all the concentration. Oh, man. Murder. It takes all your concentration just to do it. The first time I tried to play this game uh, and try to see what was going on, I tried to do it from the treadmill, and I about killed myself falling off that thing because I can't concentrate on walking in this hard game all at the same time.
Alright. So I have 4,000 coins, so just for the heck of it, let's run over to the shop. And get that last upgrade to the jump. Sure, why not? Oops. What else can we do? I have 2200 left. Looks like I can get my wall grip up a little bit. Alright. So we've had spikes, we had chainsaws, we have me dying right there for absolutely no reason. Twice, because of that stupid, I'm not going to stop moving forward even though you tell me to. As you can see, three times in a row. Four times in a row. Alright. Now we're trying to avoid these little bullets. So this definitely throws a lot of things at you to try to avoid and get it out of. 15 complete, and check out this awesome invisible stage. One way to kind of cheese this though is to constantly jump on down so you can see what's around you, because that light source will grow the more you move. But you still, you're not going to get through this one the first time. You got to keep moving to keep that thing high, and you kind of have to memorize where everything's at. And jump, jump, jump. Alright, and we're done through there. And believe it or not, that level took a very long time for me to learn. Alright, on this level I'm jumping towards the ice, but also I'm pulling back on the controller so I don't jump as far as I normally would. Oops, and I hit the bombs on the back wall, so that's no fun. Hit the bomb going down. Like I said, you're gonna die a lot in this game. It's just, it's gonna happen. Kinda have to go with it. If you're the kind of person that gets frustrated and breaks your TV with the Wiimote because you're not very happy you keep dying, you might want to stay away from this game. But if you're a fan of Super Meat Boy and games that are similarly near impossible, Go ahead and buy it and knock yourself out with that craziness. So, gotta get the right angle. So I landed into the portal, not the blocks, and I did it. Just another race to the top. With all these deaths that I've had so far, I still feel like I'm making it look easy. Alright, here comes the first boss of the first world, and I'm going to die on purpose, just so you can kind of see what he does. He's going to chase me through the whole level, and if he gets too close, he will drill me from behind just like that. So, the key is to move, and move fast. But not so fast that you die like that. Or that. I learned the pattern when I finally beat this. It took a very long time. I don't know how many times I've died uh, going through this part. But once you kind of first get the first flow down, it gets easier. This part's pretty tough because you gotta be super specific. 
And just know that as you're going through the game and you unlock these upgrades, it is giving you more control over your guy and what you're able to do, so it will become easier. Oh, he's catching up. Oh, and I'm going too fast. Stop that far jump. Maybe I shouldn't have upgraded because it changed everything that I did before. I'm just moving too fast. See him throwing blocks up behind me, catching up. Yep, guys, definitely changed with the upgrades. Are you enjoying watching me die over and over? Subscribe if it's a yes. level would actually be pretty easy if it wasn't for the time component. big bad boss is going to come right here and destroy himself, and we call it game over. Let's do the obligatory Sonic the Hedgehog loop. Jump the superficial bombs that have no reason of being there except it looks cool, and get all the good loops. I'm going to go ahead and grab the big one. Oh, no. I'm just going to beat it. I was going to get those big coins up there. So that's the game, uh, in a nutshell. You move on to the second world, which I've started and haven't finished yet. And I don't know exactly how long this game is, but it's definitely worth your money. If you guys are masochists and like to torture yourself, I mean, definitely buy it. This has been a lot of these games where they're super hard and near impossible, but this thing adds enough spice and crazy game mechanics to make it original and a lot more interesting. So, leave me some feedback if you played this game and agree or don't agree in the comments below. And don't forget to subscribe to my podcast on iTunes or other platforms. Just search for Steam on the Cheap. And you can tweet me at John Nesmith, N-E-S-S-M-I-T-H, at Twitter. Peace out. <laughs>